back in the garage with the golf again even though i'm eager to put this into that i need to make sure that the golf is up to the task of being my daily driver because once i take the engine out of the civic i'm going to take my time and maybe do some some cool things with it that means making sure the golf shifts better i want carefree shifting like my civic so I'm gonna replace the transmission oil and bleed the clutch and see if that helps. Max if you haven't seen my previous videos, I've been having issues with my 99 Golf. I sometimes get a grind going into first gear and I've been doing various repairs and upgrades to hopefully make it go away but it still happens so this video is my latest attempt this is the front bumper of the car and if you follow down on the side where the transmission is the drain plug is right there and it takes a 17 millimeter hex drive so I will be removing that and letting the fluid drain and then to fill it, I'll be removing this, which is on the front side of the transmission, on the far right side of the car, right here. And it also uses a 17 millimeter. All right. I'm gonna let that drain. I mean, my wife are gonna go for a walk. So we are back from our short walk and still dripping some, but not much. Yeah, let's go ahead and fill it up. So I'm gonna put this back on. I think that's in good enough. A few more for good measure. Ugh. So now let's take off the fill port. See, now these are old school. I don't see many people using these anymore. This was actually my grandfather's. I think he worked in a factory and I think he was a pipe fitter or something. And it is pretty cool to me. Now, no fluid's gonna come out of this because it's already empty. We're just gonna fill it here. So the oil I'm gonna refill it with is this Redline MTL. It's GL4 and that's what the golf calls for. And I heard it was good, so we'll see. Also got one of these pumps. I have, I've had it for a long time, still works. It has the in and the out. So I'm gonna put the in in the oil bottle and the out into the transmission and fill it until it spills out. Now I have three bottles. So let's see how much it takes. And each bottle is a quart. So here we go. You can feel when the fluid starts to flow, you get a little more resistance. You can actually hear it and feel it. All right, so that's one bottle. Let me get the other two ready. All right, that's two empty. On to the third. All right, now I need to keep an eye on the fill port because at some point during this one, it should start to overflow. All 
All right. So it is full. So before it finishes, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the plug. Easier said than done. Let me come at it from up underneath. There we go. All right. I'm gonna wipe up a little bit and then tighten it down. All right. This should be the right size extension to make it a little easier on me. Yeah. So I'm just gonna snug that down. And the transmission oil has been changed. As for how much it took, mostly empty, mostly empty, I mean, There's a little bit left, but not enough for the tube to pick up. And in this one, now this one is still mostly full. So it's more than two, but not two and a half. And I will save this. I suppose to check it and top it up as needed, but it never really leaks out. So that's it. And I haven't decided if I'm going to bleed the clutch before I see if this improves it or just go ahead and bleed it while it's on the stands now. Yeah, we'll see. So now I'm going to bleed the clutch, the clutch lines, and I have to take off the intake again. I should have done this last time, but anyway, here we go. All right, so now I can see it clearly. So, there is the clutch slave cylinder right there, and there is the bleed nipple right here. So I'm gonna call my waffle-loving wife out here to see if she'll help me bleed it. I'm gonna remove this dust cap. Let's see, what size is this? It's an 11. That gummit, I lost one of my, I lost one of my flare nut wrenches in the junkyard. And thankfully, it isn't this one. Let's see if we can bleed this thing. So I'm gonna try this little, this little vacuum pump that I have. I'm gonna put that on the nipple, loosen it, see if I can draw a vacuum and not have any bubbles. I verified that this little vacuum pump was actually working. I tried the little vacuum hand pump and I just couldn't get it to work right. So I ended up using the tried and true method of having a partner pump the clutch pedal from the inside. All right, so when I say pump it, go one, two, hold, then I'm gonna crack it, all right? One, two, hold all the way down or just in the middle? All the way down. All right, go ahead. You holding it? All right, pull it up. Now that's what it's supposed to look like, the way that, that line filled up. All right, I pump it twice, it should feel pretty tight, feels normal. All right, one, two, hold. All right, pull it up. Last time. Now it looks good now, I'm just gonna do it one more time for good measure. One, two, hold. Yeah, you see how this line filled up with fluid and there's no air bubbles? That is what it should look like. All right, thank you, baby. All right, having a partner really does help. So that's blade and we'll see if that helps. So now I'm gonna clean everything up, put the air box back on, put the dust cap back on the bleeder screw, and I might go for a test drive.
air box on again. I wonder what kind of intakes they make for this. I've never looked into that. On some cars, I put an intake on, not because I think I'll get any performance boost, but just to make it easier to work on. Uh, this isn't that bad to take on and off though. In the grand scheme of things, before I went on my test drive, I checked the fluid level to make sure it was good. I added a little bit and I was good to go. So I test drove it a little bit and the first few shifts felt great. And then I got a little aggressive and I made it grind. And I figured out what it was. And this jives with some of the things I saw on a forum, BW Vortex. If I push the clutch in and try and shift real fast, I'm more likely to get a grind and if I push the clutch in, give it a few seconds, and then shift, oh, it's buttery. So that leads me to think it's one of the hydraulic components. So I'm gonna start with the clutch slave cylinder and see if that fixes it, because I know I got good fluid, um, the system's bled, and my bushings, now, now the shift feel feels great. Like I said, the first few shifts feel great. So the next thing I'll do is a clutch slave cylinder. I get that in in the next couple of days. So I'll see you then. I'm not gonna stop until this thing shifts perfectly. If you'd like to see how I do that, hit subscribe. And if you'd like to see the other things I've already done to my Mark IV Golf, check out my playlist. Thanks for watching, take care.